let's start with the prayers om bhadram karne bhi shuniya madeva bhadram pashye maksha bhirya jatra stirai rangai hi stushtu vagam sastanu bihi vyase madeva hi tam yadayu ho swasti na indro vritta shravaha swasti na pusha vishva vedaha swasti na stakshora rishta nemihi swasti no brihaspatir dadato om shanti 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 We are studying Kaivalya Upanishad from Atharva Naveda, which consists of 24 mantras. We have finished seven mantras. Today we are going to start the eighth mantra. Why do we study the Upanishads? This is a question you should ask yourself. Generally, what we find people coming to study Bhagavad Gita Upanishad because they are good texts, they have heard they are nice texts to study. And uh, there is some inclination in them to study these texts. That is how we all generally enter either Bhagavad Gita or Upanishads. But the real motive behind the study of Upanishads is when a student has realized the limitations of living the current way of life. That Upanishad very clearly says that our, our living in this world with Dharma, Artha, Kama does not fulfill life. It doesn't give us the satisfaction which our heart requires. I am fulfilled, I am happy. We never say that. We always keep looking for tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow I'll be happy, tomorrow I'll be happy. You know, we keep on postponing. So the underlying uh, problem, which, we, which is not clearly seen, is shoka and moha. Shoka means sorrow, moha means delusion. This is what Arjuna suffered, which was described in the first chapter of the Bhagavad Gita. We are all suffering from sorrow and delusion. All of us, all human beings, by from birth onwards, they have this, but they do not realize this deeply in themselves. So, but if you are a student, if you are able to realize that I am not really happy, means I am sorrowful. You know, I, do, I feel a sense of limitation in life. I want to achieve so many things, I can't. I want to do so many things through uh, in the world, I can't. I want to know so many things, but still there are limitations to my intellect, physical limitations, mental limitations, intellectual limitations, they bother all of us. And we try to find out some solutions in the world. These two together, Shoka and Moha is called as bondage. It's called as samsara. And as a wise student understands this before he comes to the study of Upanishads. This is very important. 
when we do a text, we should understand why we study a text. What is the sambandha between the text and what I want? What is the benefit, prayojana? Who is an adhikari? Who is a who is a right student? What is the uh, what is the uh, what is that? What will the text reveal to me? So adhikari, sambandha, vishaya, prayojanam. These four together is called as anubandha chatushtaya. I repeat. First is adhikari, second is vishaya, third is sambandha, and the fourth is prayojanam. So my problem is I have sorrow and delusion in life. I'm confused. I am an adhikari. The vishaya is sorrow. I want to get rid of sorrow. Then what is the sambandha of the text? This text, if I study, it will get rid of me, uh, my sorrow. That is the prayojanam and that is the connection. If I get rid of sorrow, I am free, I am Jeevan Mukta. So this is how we should analyze Anubandha Chatushtrayam, what is the basic samsara or bondage, and then you come to study the Upanishad, then you will understand what this Upanishad will give me at the end of the study. In Vedanta, we always say, I'm giving you a little bit of introduction because you know you should be, I want you to connect the text with the, uh, what we are trying to do uh, and what we are trying to do in our learning. Because I believe that from these talks, you should be able to transform yourself. That is the purpose of these talks. I want you to go deeper into inquiry. I want you to analyze your own life and then ask yourself, do I have delusion in life, moha? Do I have sorrow in life? Do I feel sometimes unhappy? Is there a, is there, is there a remedy for that in this world? Can I ask my parents about the remedy? They also don't know. Can I ask my friends about it? They, of course, they are, don't, they are not interested. Can I ask anybody else? No. The only source is you come to Veda. Throughout the history of mankind, people have come to the Veda with these questions in mind. We are not the very first ones. And that is, this Veda is really immortal uh, knowledge. It can never go away. Because as long as there are human beings on this earth, they will have sorrow, they will have delusion. They are born with delusion. They will uh, not be able to solve the delusions in life on their own. A wise person will come to the study of Upanishads. The Upanishads have got a secret way of revealing what this world is. We have a vision of the world through our sense organs and from what we have learned through our experiences. But the Veda tells us what you perceive through the sense organs is not the real world. They are experiences to fulfill your prarabdha karma, which belongs to the body and the mind. But the reality is very different. What we experience through the world in our experiences is dvaitam, 
subject object reality what the veda tells us is this is a transactional vyavaharika satyam it is not the absolute paramarthika satyam so we have to do what is this dvaita viveka when we come to upanishads when we are trying to understand the shankaracharya's view of life the way he understands the upanishads and how he has brought forward a vision of the upanishads that is what we are trying to learn so in our normal transactions we have dvaita anubhava which the upanishad says is not the reality you take any upanishad taitri upanishad says satyam jnana manantam brahma that is the definition of the reality turi atma is the reality mandukya upanishad bhuma is the reality chandogya upanishad 7th chapter so every every shetragnya is the reality bhagavad gita chapter 13 ken upanishad says shrotrasya shrotram it is the year of the year mind of the mind they are all pointing towards something which is not what my senses are experiencing whatever the reality which the upanishads reveal is called as advaitam see you need to understand these things when you come to the deeper meanings which we are study we are going we are studying from verse number 6 onwards unless you know the background you will not be able to appreciate what is this uh, unmanifest and uh, all this you will not understand so this is very important for you to understand in order to put an end to bondage in order to put an end to sorrow in life delusion in life which is caused by the ignorance of the self ignorance of who am i and what is this world that is the cause of this delusion and then vedanta starts analysis of the problem and it says first of all understand dvaitam is the cause of sorrow advaitam is the cause of liberation dvaitam means plurality which i experience in my waking state in my dream state in my sleep state these are the three states of duality i and the world subject i the jiva and the world of either the waking state dream state or the sleep state subject object is what is called as jagat what the upanishad is revealing is something beyond this subject object duality jagat which is called as as ishvara or is called as brahman you must be very clear when you come to the upanishads what is the nature of our study what are we studying we are not studying what our sense organs are perceiving as the world the upanishads are a pramanam they are the eye of knowledge of the higher reality when i see something i say this is the truth to my eyes when i hear something from my ears i say that is the truth because i have heard it when it comes to vedanta you should say whatever i see whatever i hear is not the truth 
what the Veda says is the truth. Because Veda is a powerful pramanam, much more power powerful than the sense organs. See how important it is to understand all this. Because then only you will come to the truth. You will understand the deeper meaning of Kaivalyam. The truth alone is. There are two types of knowledge. One is called as Vritti Jnanam, which is the knowledge created, generated in the mind. That is what is happening to us in the waking state. All the knowledge which we gather is vritti jnanam. This vritti jnanam is of two types, manifest and unmanifest. Vritti comes, vritti means thought. Thought of perception, thoughts in the intellect of conceptualizing, all our thoughts, all are in the mind. So knowledge, there is one type of knowledge which is called as vritti jnana. Knowledge generated by the mind. And the second knowledge is called as sarupa jnana, which is the jnana, the knowledge of my nature. In the study of Upanishads, we discard the vritti jnanam as the truth. We say the vritti jnanam is coming and going. Today I experienced something, yesterday I experienced something, five years ago again, again I experienced something, tomorrow I'll experience something that is knowledge of the world which is coming and going, coming and going, rapidly coming and going. It serves the purpose of prarabdha karma, that's all. But what lies behind this, the cause of this vritti jnanam is surupa jnanam, which is awareness, consciousness, which is my nature. Nature is something which does not come and go. That is the definition of nature. The heat of fire is its nature. It doesn't come and go. It is always there. When you, when you experience fire, the heat is there. The sun does not do an action to brighten up the world. That is its nature, illumination. It is not an action, it is its nature. Similarly, the, my real nature is awareness. It does not come and go, it always is. It is eternal, it is sat, it is always existing. It is consciousness, it is chit. It is never affected by time. That is why we call it anantam. And the truth is this sarupanyanam that is the truth of this jiva. It is the truth of Ishwara. So jiva and Ishwara in the waking state are, are seen with the body. Ishwara's body is the whole jagat, the jiva's body is this physical body. But what lies behind them is consciousness awareness. In the sixth verse, okay, so this is all the background information for us to know and learn the sixth mantra, which we learned two weeks ago. 
What was the sixth mantra? Achintyam, Arupam, I will pull out the sixth verse so that you understand. The sixth mantra was Achintyam Abhyaktam Ananta Rupam Shivam Prashantam Amritam Brahma Yonim. So these are all the words which describe not the Vritti Jnanam. These are all describing Swarupa Jnanam. I hope this is very, very clear. Vritti Jnanam is coming and going in the waking state, dream state, sleep state. We all have another state, which is called as the fourth state, which is our real state. It is called the state of Turiyam in Mandukya Upanishad. Here it is called as the state of Kaivalyam. This state of Kaivalyam is explained in this verse. We are not talking about the waking experiences, the dream experience. That is all going to come and we are going to reject all that in verse number 12, 13, 14, 15. Right in the beginning, the Upanishads is trying to tell us what is our real nature. This is our real nature. What is the real nature? It is unthinkable. Why unthinkable? Because mind is not involved. There is no vritti. Unmanifest. Why unmanifest? Unmanifest. Because manifest is something which the sense organs are perceiving. Then something the sense organs are not perceiving, it is called as unmanifest. Is there something like that? The Upanishad says, yes, there is. That is what is called as Kaivalya. It alone is. And that is my nature. Anantarupa. There is no middle, there is no end of this Kaivalya Sarupa. Shivam. Shivam means it is auspicious. Very auspicious, divine. Because that is the place the Lord lives. That is the Swarupa of the Lord. <coughs> Prashantam. Absolutely peaceful. Amritatva. Immortal. Brahmayonim. It is the origin of the creator itself. What we call it as Kaivalyam is the origin. It is the source from where everything is created. This, this verse number six is extremely important. You must note it down as one of the best mantras of this Kaivalya Upanishad. This mantra and the 19th mantra. Very, very important mantras of Kaivalya Upanishad. So then it is without beginning, without end. That's what I said. Ekam. Ekam means one. It is non dual. That is why we call it Advaitam. Ekam Advaitam. Why Advaitam? Because the whole world comes from that Kaivalya state, it resides in that Kaivalya state, and then it resolves into that state. Very important. These are all very important indicators for us to know there is a state like this. It is beyond our sleep state. It is beyond our waking state. It is beyond our dream state. There is a state of Kaivalya. And this Upanishad is revealing this particular Kaivalyam state. Throughout our verses, we must remember this is a fourth state, which we are not aware till we come to the Upanishad. That is why the Upanishads are a Pramanam. Can I see it through my eyes? No, you cannot see it through your eyes. Can I hear about it? No, you cannot hear. It is only known because you are studying the Upanishad. 
When you close your eyes and say the Upanishad is revealing to me the state of mind as my nature, I do not have death, I am immortal, I was never born as consciousness, awareness principle, you accept it as the truth, then you will see the benefit of your sorrow disappearing, your delusions disappearing. Very powerful, because this is much more powerful than the knowledge which comes from the Upanishad. It can burn all other knowledges of illusions, confusions, sorrow, because those are all not real. They are false. According to the Upanishad, this is the reality. Once I know this reality, I am free. Not tomorrow, not after the fall of the body, but today, right now, because I know this mantra, I know the meaning of this mantra. In the right way, I know it. See, I know this. You have to go deeper into your own personality and say there is something which is beyond the three states, and that is the state of Kaivalyam explained in this verse number six. All there are many verses in this Upanishad which will describe this particular state. We have understood the sixth mantra, the seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth, all those mantras will become very clear. But very important to understand this mantra clearly because this is the starting point where the Upanishad reveals the ultimate truth which it wants to reveal in this Upanishad. Like in Taitri Upanishad, Brahman and Devali, which we are studying in the Wednesday classes. Satyam Jnana Manantam. Like that, in this particular Upanishad, this is the truth. In every Upanishad, the same Kaivalyam will be revealed to us. But in a different name. Mandukya calls it Turiyam. Chandogya Upanishad calls it Bhuma. Brahmanaika Upanishad calls it Brahman. But they are revealing the same truth. If you understand this, if you have the key in your intellect to open up this mantra correctly, then your study of all other Upanishads will become very easy. Not only that, you will also understand all other remaining mantras of this Upanishad. So this Kaivalyam state is all pervading, it is called as Vibhum. And the last description is Chidananda Rupam Adbhutam. Chidananda Rupam. It is of the nature of knowledge, bliss, formless, and Adbhutam. Adbhutam means it's wonderful. It's really, really uh, uh, blissful. A person who knows this knowledge of Kaivalyam, he becomes that. Because that is how the Upanishad tells us the benefit of this study. <clears throat> It is this Upanishad which reveals to us our real nature. By knowing this real nature, which is called as Atvaitam, non-dual nature, because the world is dependent on this awareness, on this consciousness, on this fourth state, Kaivalyam. World does not have an independent existence. Kaivalyam, I am this of this nature of consciousness awareness, which is Advaitam. The world depends on this, whereas this can exist by itself. It has always been it existing without any change. The more my mind gets used to thinking about this nature of mine, the more I will get rid of my sorrows in life. The jiva bhava, 
which we have, we get rid of that and what replaces that is Brahma Bhava, which is called as Kaivalya Bhava. The next verse after this, which we have finished the last week, this is a meditative verse. Uma Sahayam Parameshwaram Prabhum Parameshwaram Prabhum Trilochanam Nilakantam Prashantam a person who meditates on Trilochanam Nila Kandam Prashantam that Lord is having the Maya Shakti called as Parvati, Uma. So, this Kaivalyam is the substratum, the Adhara of the whole creation. This is how the Upanishad describes this Kaivalyam state. And this is how we are going to study these states in a verse 8, 9, 10, 11 and all. You see, we, that is why this, uh, uh, this introduction I am giving before the verse number 8 for today is very important. So this Kaivalyam state, which is called as Brahman, has got a Shakti, which is called as Maya Shakti. That Maya Shakti is represented by Mother Uma Parvati. And Parameshwara is nothing but Lord Shiva, the blue-necked Shiva. In scriptures, we have descriptions like this. This is for us to meditate the nature of that Lord. And this Lord is the source of the manifested world, number one. And he is the source, the witness of all. You see, this is the Kaivalyam state which is being described. And it is the state in which there is no darkness. Darkness means there is no ignorance. So here in the seventh mantra, the Lord with the nature of awareness is being described. The jiva is also with a body and it, he is also of the nature of awareness. The nature of awareness is common to both the Lord and the jiva. The Lord is present in the jiva, in the body-mind complex. That Lord is present, that consciousness, awareness is present as the witness of all our thoughts. You can try it out. Who is witnessing these thoughts which rise in my mind every day, all the emotions? There must be a witness. There must be an experiencer. That experiencer is called as consciousness. And that consciousness doesn't have any ignorance. It is knowledge. It is of the nature of knowledge. That is what is said in the seventh mantra. Now, today we will go into the eighth mantra. So, just to revise whatever I have said so far, you can, when you get the video also of the recording, go through this introduction of 35 minutes, which I have given you today, because when you go through this, if you have any questions, you ask me at the end of the talk, I will try and answer, but it's very important because the crux is we want to get rid of sorrow. And the only way to get rid of sorrow is sorrow and delusion. Delusion means I don't know who I am. How to know, how to get rid of this delusion? I don't know the world. I don't know the creator. I don't know who I am. So what, do, what knowledge do I have? I'm just here. I've come with a bag of uh, baggage of some vasanas, uh, inclinations. I just go through the inclinations and then, then it goes away. The body and mind goes away, but that is not the truth. The reality, the truth is I am of the nature of consciousness awareness. Okay, now let's go to the eighth mantra. 
सब्रह्म स शिव से सोक्षर परम स्वराटे सोक्षर परम स्वराटे स ये विष्णु स प्राण स ये विष्णु स प्राण स कालो अग्नि स चंद्रमा स कालो अग्नि स चंद्रमा स ब्रह्म स शिव से इंद्र सोक्षर परमा स्वरा सो हियर वी आर डिस्क्राइबिंग द नेचर ऑफ द लॉर्ड with reference to the whole jagat you see i told you in order to understand the world we must understand who am i and we must understand who is the creator of the whole world and the common factor with between, between both of them will be described as kaivalya so here what we are seeing is description of saguna ishvara saguna means with gunas when we say he is brahma shiva indra these are all with reference to the creation creator of the universe is brahma with reference to the world this kaivalya state is the ultimate substratum he is indra the lord of the swarga the, the swarga loka immutable supreme self luminous you see these three words they describe the nirguna swarupa nirguna swarupa means it is formless it is imperishable how can it be imperishable any form is perishable formless alone is imperishable therefore the nature of the the nature of the lord is what formless why do i pray to lord shiva in the temple with an idol and all that with the or go to lord uh, uh, venkata chalapati vishnu devi these are all the starting points i start as a junior seeker in order to for my mind to come to one point an idol worship is recommended in the beginning so that my mind can come and say this lord i'm seeing before me as lord shiva lord parvati or lord uh, 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 vishnu they are representing the creator so my mind gets used to oneness there is something one but then i have to go beyond the form to the formless to that advaita principle when i go to the advaita principle <coughs> the upanishad says that formless god is imperishable so the nature of the lord is formless that is what we should understand from the upanishads bhagavad gita the 10th and the 11th chapter is a very good explanation of how i can grow out of form to formless because in the 13th chapter of the gita the gita says the lord is shetrajna he is formless in the 10th and 11th they talk about the glories of saguna ishvara and then vishwarupa darshana in the 11th chapter so here we are talking about immutable the supreme supreme means there is nothing beyond self luminous self luminous means it he is of the nature of consciousness it is not inert in order to say he, that lord is not inert they say self luminous he is the knowing principle everything else in the world is jadam inert 
According to Vedanta, even our mind is jadad, uh, is jadam. Mind is jadam, the body is jadam, the world is jadam. Jadam means inert. But what is the knowing principle behind the whole world? It is this. This consciousness, this immutable, imperishable consciousness is existing. That is the revelation of this Upanishad. That self-luminous, imperishable, supreme Lord alone is called as Vishnu or Brahma or Shiva. It is the same Lord which is self-luminous, immutable, supreme Lord which is appearing in the form of prana, the vital breath which is responsible for the, for the, uh, uh, for the living body. Birth and death are, are, uh, uh, are uh, functions of this breath. When the breath goes away, the body dies. When the breath comes into the body, the birth, the birth of the uh, baby comes up. So prana is nothing but it's an expression of this consciousness awareness. The body is manifest, body goes to unmanifest. These are the states of the gross body. If I know that, then I will never be afraid of the body. I will become fearless because that is the nature of the body. It is not my nature. My nature is described by the Upanishad as immutable. It cannot have change, no vikara. Body has asti, six modification, asti, jayate, viparinyamate, vardhate, apakshiyate, vinashyati, which we are studying in Tattva Bodha. But here it is, imperishable, supreme, absolute nature. And then he, the, uh, the Upanishad says, that Lord without form is the time principle, is the fire principle in the what we see. He is the moon, he is the sun. That is how they describe the imperishable Lord, formless Lord is expressing as the world. That is the vision of the uh, Upanishad. So in the final stage of Arupa Ishvara, Jnanam, in the final stage of the final, in the stage of uh, formless Ishvara, when we meditate on that, we understand that that formless nature is common between the subject, meditator himself, and the creator. Brahmaiva Atma, Atmaiva Brahma. Two words refer to one reality, Brahman and Atma. Brahman means the substratum of the whole universe. Atma means the substratum of this body-mind complex. Body-mind complex, the, the substratum for that is this awareness called as reality. The substratum for the whole universe is the Lord, Ishvara, and that Substratum is called as Brahman. Brahman and Atma are one reality. That is what is called as Aikyam. This is a Mahavakya. Whenever we say there is a oneness between Jivatma and Paramatma, it is called as Mahavakya. Brahman without, with the Maya power assumes a variety of forms. That is what is called as Aupadika Swarupa. That means the Lord with the entire form is a Jagat, he is the whole universe. When I say Jagat, it includes my body and mind also. But that Lord has got a formless nature which is called as Kaivalya, which is the reality. What, the, the, what we see with our eyes is the Saguna Ishvara. It is Lord with form. But what the Upanishad says is that is not the reality. It is only a transactional reality. Vyavaharika Satya. 
What is the Paramartika Satyam? Paramartika Satyam is the absolute reality, which is the invisible, imperishable, supreme Lord, formless Lord, Arupa Ishwara. Saha Brahma. Brahma stands for Chaturmukha Brahma. Is a creator. According to the scriptures, we will see in, uh, in the Puranas and all that, they describe Lord with four heads. The four heads represent the four Vedas. That's all. The four Vedas. Because all the knowledge is there in the Veda. And the Lord is omniscient. He's, he's, he's all, uh, all knowledge. And that all knowledge, Ishvara, is called as Brahman when it is formless in nature, when it is the reality, when it is the substratum. This is the way I understand the nature of the world. When I have this new vision from the Upanishads, I get a new vision to see the same world in a different light, the light of the Veda. In the light of consciousness, in the light of awareness, I see the same world before, uh, which I was seeing through my eyes before, but now I know what the reality is. Vishnu Sahai Eva, one Brahman with three Veshams, Brahma, Vishnu, and Maheshwara, is called as this uh, reality. It is the same reality. One reality appearing with three roles. Brahma is the creator, Vishnu is the maintainer, sustainer, and Shiva is the resolver. All these three happen in our daily life. Waking, waking and sleep. Waking, dream, sleep. Waking, dream, sleep. Sleep is what? Resolution. Waking is creation. Dream is also creation. Maintenance is a part, sustenance is a part of waking state. So one who creates is a formless God. That's what is the bottom line. No one is superior or inferior. None of these three roles are superior or inferior. That is why in the chapter 11 of the Bhagavad Gita, the, when, the, when we, Arjuna sees there's so much of destruction shown in the 11th chapter of the Bhagavad Gita, everybody is going into Lord's mouth. Kalospi, the Kala, the Kala principle, the time principle is a resolution. It resolves everything. That Kala principle is the Lord. It is his form. So when we have an objective view of the universe, we should accept both the creation sustenance and the resolution. Accept it as the law of this universe, cosmic law. Once you have accepted as the cosmic law, then you will say you will not have any confusion about the world. No more delusions. Accept it. This is the way the world is. In order to serve the purpose for the jiva to go back to his real nature, this is the nature of the world designed by the Lord. We can worship all forms, but remember, all forms belong to one formless Brahman. Brahman or Kaivalyam or Turiyam, whatever you can name it, but it is one, one reality. Because it is without form, we call it reality. Why we call it reality? Because it is the truth. And what is the world? The world is false. It is unreal. Whereas the consciousness, awareness is the reality. When I understand I am this reality, the consciousness, the awareness principle, my vision of the whole universe changes. I am no longer, I am liberated, I am mukta, I am, mok, I am a moksha purusha. Because I am there, that is my real nature. The knowledge of the world, the knowledge of the body, the knowledge of the mind, all that is the Vyavaharika Satya. 
So our goal is going from the form to formless. We have, what is the meaning of going to formless? It means transcending the form through knowledge, through understanding that there is something like the pure state in which I alone am because it is a state in which there is no differences. There is no differences, no bheda. The Turiyam state, that Kaivalyam state, there is no bheda. There is no differences between a jiva and a jiva, jiva and the jagat, the jiva and the Ishwara, Ishwara and Jagat, there is no more differences. All of them are resolved into one formless reality. Sahayeva Indra, Devaraja is Indra. The forms are temporary, incidental. Brahman is appearing as Indra Devata. 14 lokas are there. There are lords of each loka. All that is represented by this one Brahman. One reality is in different, different forms. So what is the Lord's original nature without any Vesham, without any dress? That is described as Saha Aksharaha. Akshara means, Shara means perishing. Nashayati. Aksharaha. What is without perishing, which is, uh, uh, which is without change? So changeless is what is called as the Lord's real nature. Changing nature of the world, waking dream sleep, waking dream sleep, this changing nature is not the real nature. The body being born, the body, being, uh, the body dying is not the real nature. The real nature is I am a consciousness awareness principle, aksharaha. What will never be deformed? Formless one alone will never be deformed. Anything with form is changing. It will remain for some time and it will perish. Anything you take with form. Akshara Brahman can't be deformed because it has transcended all forms. Akshara Brahma is a very popular word. It's a popular description. Akshara, very important. No perishing. You see, we are all looking at changes. Our eyes are only designed to see change. Form and color. Changes in the sound, ears, touch, all different types of touch we can soft, hard, everything, all changing. But there is a changeless awareness in the same body, it is there. So what I have to do is, I have to just drop the changing mind all the time and bring it back to the center and say, I am the awareness. What really causes sorrow in our life is the thoughts. Whenever there are sorrowful thoughts and I become, I, I become aware of it, drop it and then come back to your center. Yatho yatho nishcharati. Whenever, whenever your mind is wandering, chapter 6 of Bhagavad Gita, pull it back again to the center of your personality, which is the heart. Paramaha, this center, the core of your personality is absolute, ultimate climax. It is the zenith of all the pursuits. It's beyond the five koshas, beyond the five dresses which this, this atma is wearing in the waking dream and sleep states. It is the subtlest in creation. You see, we see space, air, these are subtle in nature. So what is visible is only this, uh, uh, you know, what is percep perceived by the senses is only up to the level of air. The space is known in a, by inferentially because of the sound. But beyond that lies this Kaivalya. 
which is Paramaha and which is Swarat. Swarat means it is independent, it is self effulgent consciousness principle. So we have to go deep in our personality to understand this nature of consciousness, existence, bliss, Swarat, Paramaha, Aksharaha. These are all words. These are all pointers for us to go deep within ourselves and realize I am the formless, objectless awareness. As long as my mind has got objects, I am not that. What you should say is neti neti. This is not me, this is not me. The moment you arrive at the objectless awareness, consciousness, you should say, aham brahma asmi. I am this consciousness. I am the center of the entire universe. And that, once I know that center, which is the reality, I am free. The samsara which I suffered will just vanish. Vanish means it will be there, my eyes will perceive the body, but I will not give too much credibility to it. It is a, it is a nature of the waking world to have forms, colors, sound for a certain time, and again it will resolve. The real truth is I am free. In Satyam Jnanam Anantam Brahma, which is, comes from Taitri Upanishad, Jnanam there stands for Swarat. Swarat means it is an independent principle. Whereas the world is not Swarat. It is Paratantram. I'm just giving you some knowledge from Taitri Upanishad. Initially, I said there are two experiences we have. I am experiencing the knowledge with the vrittis, which is called as vritti jnanam. The vritti jnanam comes whenever there is a pramata. Pramata means there is a knower. The mind is the knower. Then there are sense organs, which is the instruments for the knowledge, which is the pramanam. And then there are sense objects. So these three together, pramata, pramanam, prameyam, is called as triputi, which is responsible for the knowledge of the world. That is dependent on the karakas, which is the mind, the senses, and which is the sense objects. Unless these three are there, you, it is not complete. You will never have knowledge of the world. Triputi comes, rises, and, and it, it, it resolves at the same time. Whenever we are wake, in the waking state, the triputi will rise. The mind will rise, that becomes the pramata. The sense organs becomes the pranam. The sense objects become the prameyam, the known. Knowing instrument, the known objects, and the knower. They are three, they, they are impermanent. Or this is an experience for all of us. That is why it is called as paratantram, changing. It is not, it is dependent on something. What is the other one, which is satyam jnana manantam, that is my swarupa. I have made these two points very clear. I will be repeating it in every Upanishad. Whenever you want to have clarity between the mind and the Atma, you must understand it in this way. This is how Shankaracharya explains it in Taitri Upanishad in his Bhashya. In his commentary, and he is the greatest teacher of Upanishads. Jnanam stands for Swarat. Swarat means independent principle. Prana, Kala, Chandrama. These are three words which are there in the Mulam. It is there in the mantra. 
Brahman, the pure consciousness, awareness, appears as Brahma, Vishnu, Shiva. Kala is the time principle. Prana, you know, it is the vital air which is responsible for the birth and death. Chandrama means it is a devata of the moon. That represents the samashti. Prana is at the individual level. Uh, you see, the Upanishad is saying that there is a reality which is behind the Vyashti and Samashti. Vyashti means the, at the individual body level. Samashti means at the gross total level. Sayeva tat tateva saha. I am that Brahman, that Brahman is me. This vision is what is called as Sarvatma Bhava. I am that pure reality, that pure reality is me. This is the way to meditate. If I know this knowledge, if I understand it in this way, this is what is the correct way of understanding the mantra. Distinctly, I, I understand. Vritti jnanam is not the real knowledge. Sarupa jnanam, formless nature, is my real nature. I am eternal. I am never born. Because anything which is born has got form. And the Upanishad tells me I am birthless, I am deathless. That is the beauty of this verse. Instead of saying Brahman is everything, I start, I learn to say I am everything because this reality is common between Ishvara and the Jiva. It is very difficult to understand this, but again and again, when you study the 12, 11 other Upanishads, this point of oneness between Jiva and Ishvara will become clear. If you are new to Upanishads, this is the first time you are listening to this entire scheme of things. It may be difficult for you to accept everything because your intellect is full of questions. But don't worry, keep listening. Your questions and doubts will go away one day. And the same truth of Kaivalya Upanishad it will be repeated in every Upanishad and you will understand it very clearly. As you go by, you will keep you, you will you will say, yes, yes, it is a truth. I understand. I can meditate on that now because that is my own reality. Meditation becomes very easy. If you know the knowledge of Atma, meditation is the easiest thing because you just abide in Atma. And that's all. You are in meditative throughout your life. That is what the jnanis do. They are always in meditation. Meditation is not an action for them. It is just nature. I hear, I am here not as a body mind, blankness in sleep or in meditation, but I am the pure consciousness illuminator of all this. Many people say, I only see blankness when I, when I sit in meditation. You have to rise above the blankness and ask the question, who is observing the blankness? It is this consciousness. So hold on to the consciousness and drop the blankness. That is the last jump when you are in the pole vault. You have reached the pole. Now you have to drop the pole, the pole which has lifted you right up to the uh, top and then go to the other side. So drop the blankness which you are experiencing, which you have remembering, which, oh, this is what I experienced in my sleep also. That also I drop it and I own my nature as illuminator. Okay, that was the last. Each, each of these verses, you will find brilliant knowledge coming and you will find you are able to go deeper and deeper into your own personality. Every verse, this Kaivalya Upanishad is very beautiful because it goes, makes you, the thoughts in your mind, it will make the thoughts, with the help of the light of these verses, your, the thought will take the torch and go deeper into your personality.
Let's do the next verse. Sayeva Sarvam Yad Bhutam Sayeva Sarvam Yad Bhutam Yetcha Bhavyam Sanatanam Yetcha Bhavyam Sanatanam Nyatvatam Ratyumatyeti ृत्युमेती नान्य पंध विमुक्त नान्य पंध विमुक्त दिस इज अ ब्रिलियंट वर्स सर्व यूत यव्य सनातन Very important verse because it teaches us how this, how can I become immortal? This is a verse which if you meditate, you will become immortal. This consciousness, awareness was there in the past it is there right now it will be there in the future that is the knowledge which i get from the upanishads which is a pramanam for consciousness my eyes are a pramanam for the form and color my ears are the pramanam pramanam means source of knowledge so i have five sources of knowledge through my five sense organs the upanishad is my sixth sense organ i am putting on the eye of that upanishad and i am trying to know the atma upanishad tells me atma is eternal knowing him knowing that ishvara formless ishvara i can go beyond the sting of death death means what change the change of a previous condition and birth to a, that is what is called as death previous condition i was in the body i and in the and the mind was in this body the mind has left the body that is what is called as death mind will take another body that is what is called as birth change of the that the transfer of the mind from one body to another body is transmigration it's a phenomena which happens in this universe for this phenomena the upanishad is the only source does it happen no human being can say yes or no the source is the upanishad and it is the same upanishad which says there is atma that is your real nature it never travels it is it was he it alone is and it will be see look at this saeva sarvam yat sayad bhutam yascha bhavyam sanatanam eternally it is there knowing that atma the formless kaivalya swarupam i can cross over samsara samsara means birth that cycle change and then the upanishad says nanya pantha vimukte there is no other method you can try hundreds of methods you can try hatha yoga kundalini yoga you can try uh, uh, you can try vipassana you can try so many methods are there going to pilgrimage all that is there no doubt chanting of vishus or some no doubt it is there but that will not make you reach and cross over samsara they are stepping stones to cross over it will make your mind pure when your mind is pure come to this knowledge learn the ninth verse of the kaivalya upanishad which says the formless god is existing 
and it is the nature of the God which is changeless eternally it is there. There are two things eternal. Eternally changing, that is also eternal, which is our body, mind, and the world. Eternally changeless is also there. That is what is Sakshi. That is what is awareness. That is what is consciousness. In meditation, when you sit down and you say neti neti, you are dropping all the vritti jnanam and you are going to sarupa jnanam, which is your real nature, for which vritti is not required, because that is the nature of Atma. It is not an action. That is why karma is not required. It is jnana. Jnana yoga is powerful, much more powerful than karma yoga. Karma yoga is a stepping stone, but come to jnana yoga, come to Kaivalya Upanishad. There is no samuchaya between upasana and karma to come here. It is all the beginning steps, upasana, meditation, dhyana, you know, dharana, all that is stepping stone. But ultimate is dhyana. Ultimate is this knowledge, jnana. Everything in creation is Brahman. Brahman is very clear now. In case it is not clear, please ask me in the end of the talk. I will explain to you again what it really means. Brihatvat idi Brahman, the absolute one, the biggest one, the biggest one. It is not bigger than something, the biggest. That is the definition of Brahman. Absolute. There is nothing beyond that. It is Kaivalya. Sayeva Sarvam Bhutam. Everything belongs to past is Brahman. What, what does it mean? Time is a principle which comes from Brahman. Time is a principle which results in Brahman. That's all. When I was in the sleep state, was there any time? No. For me, for me, the awareness consciousness principle, there was no time. So who am I? I am pure consciousness, awareness, beyond my sleep state. That's all is the Upanishad teaching me. Is it very difficult to understand? No, very easy. It is talking about my nature. So will I be ever confused? Will I be deluded? Will I be saying I am mortal, I am dying, I am, I am fearful and all that? All is gone because it is not real. This is reality. I have understood Kaivalya Upanishad. That is what makes me fearless. Yacha bhavyam. Everything belonging to future is Brahman. Brahman belongs to which time? No time because there is no time in Brahman. Time is there in the world. World is of a lower nature of reality. The baker, the dream is of a lower uh, nature of reality compared to the baking. Brahman, Atma, is a higher order of reality compared to the waking. Is it difficult to understand? No, it's very easy. Now I'm very clear. I will not have any confusion. That is what you should say. Because this Kaivali Upanishad is a, is a, is a uh, Upanishad which can break all the shackles of ignorance. I may have lived in ignorance, in darkness for such a long time, so many births, but one Upanishad, one mantra of Upanishad can wake me up. Sanatanam, it is eternal principle. You see, all we have to do is take the Upanishad as a pramanam, as a source of knowledge. 99.9% .9 of your doubts will get cleared. The moment your intellect accepts this as a source of knowledge, like the eyes, Upanishad will not teach me something which is not the truth. What undergoes change? Superficial Nama Rupas arrive and depart in time. In time, the waking body comes, in time, the in timeless, the waking state goes off. Essential substance is 
Brahman that remains changeless. Waves are rising and falling. Waking dream sleep is rising and falling every day. But where is a substratum? It has, this is a, see, wave is nothing but it is adheya. Adheya means it is changing. It is name and form. But what is the adhara? Adhara means what is the substratum which is holding this wave? That is water. Water is sanatanam. It is always, it is always there. Compared to the wave, that what is the water? It is the nature of that wave is water. Similarly, the nature of our body, mind, the nature of this world is what awareness. What is this awareness? It is formless. It is consciousness. That's all. It is easy to understand. Tam atma vena nyatva brityum ashnute. What it says is, knowing this Brahman, knowing this consciousness, awareness, not sitting somewhere, but it is my own nature, then one crosses mortality and one becomes immortal. You see, in verse 3, we talked about renunciation, tyagaha. Through tyagaha, you can reach the truth. And what is the tyaga? Tyaga is renouncing the false perception of the world as the truth. And coming to the Kaibalya awareness principle, Pradnyaha, consciousness as the immortal principle. Now, Anya Pantha Vimuktaye, this is a very important statement which comes very, very uh, in. in uh, uh, Purusha Suktam also, it comes in Svetashvatara Upanishad also. What it says is, there is no other path for liberation, for moksha, except coming to the knowledge of Brahman and understanding and claiming that Brahman to be myself. Complete freedom you can get only from Jnana Yoga. Jnanat evatu kaivalyam. Several means of purification of mind are there, but the Garbha Graham, the Atma, the, mo, the, the path to enter the Atma is only through knowledge. Like a temple may have four entrances, north, south, east, north gate, east gate, west gate, south gate. You go to Chidambaram, you go to some of the temples in South India, there are four gates. South gate, north gate, you know. Guruvayu temple also has got four, the four gates. But ultimately, to enter the Lord, there is only one Garbha Graha. The Lord is situated and that entrance, there is only one. You may have used four entrance to come to the stepping stone of the Garbha Graha. You may have used pilgrimage, you may have uh, uh, used uh, meditation, jhanam, uh, uh, you know, different, different methods of purification are there. You should not, you should be very clear what sadhana I should do for what. Repetition of mantra is for concentration of the mind. Chanting the same mantra, I get the power of the mind. My mind gets a special strength because of that. Vishnu Sarsamam, it makes my mind pure. For one, 20 minutes of chanting, I don't think of anything except only one thought, Vishnu, 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 1,008 names. I chant the name of one God in different, different forms. That purifies my mind. So benefit of knowing Brahman is one crosses the fear of death. See, fear of death is a thought. The thought goes away because you have known how to get rid of thoughts by the knowledge of Atma, which is the substratum. From where the thoughts are rising, where the thoughts are resolving. You will not be bothered and say, my mind is wandering. Okay, that is its nature. The mind's nature will be wandering. But where is a substratum? I am the substratum. I am the pure consciousness. 
hold on to that consciousness, your mind will disappear. We hold the possessions, relations only because of insecure. I don't know where is security in life. I keep looking all over outside, my bank balance, my possessions, my gold, my jewelry, my house, my car, my children, my, everything is there outside. Is there security there? No, because they are all insecure themselves. The real security is inside you, in your own intellect, in Atma. Lord resides there. Why are you searching all around? A child clings to the sari of a mother till it grows. A youth says, I can achieve anything because the ego is there. In old days, there is insecurity, there is samsara because you don't know the truth. Moksha is freedom from insecurity. Insecurity is always a thought in your mind. That thought comes because you do not know the truth of your own self. You do not have the self-knowledge. We use things, but we should not cling to them. What is mechanism of liberation? Wave as a wave, imagine it is a living being. Then the wave starts looking at itself as a wave. Suppose the wave looks at itself as a wave. What will it say? I am very mortally afraid as a wave. I was a big wave. When I reach the shore, I become so tiny and small, I become a bubble. As a wave, the wave can never get more immortality, cannot get rid of mortality. What should the wave do to become immortal? Should it become a bigger wave? But the bigger wave also has a beginning and end. Wave can't attain immortality as wave, it get, needs to get the knowledge. Human being cannot attain immortality as human beings. As jivas, I can never become immortal. I have to become divine. I have to become, become that kaivalya. A prakrita purusha, a prakrita purusha. You see, from an animal man, you become a man-man. From a man-man, you become a divine man. That is Swami Chinmayananda's favorite quote. Wave understands I am water. Waviness, incidental feature will go away. My body is incidental. My mind is incidental. It will go away. It will have arrival and departure. But I am not the wave, I am not my mind, I am not the body. Who am I? I am the consciousness behind both of them. I know I am water. I know I am the pure self. The human can attain immortality, immortality only by one method. Humanness is incidental. Human experience has to end. I am not, a, the spiritual essence is what we should know. I am not a human being with a spiritual experience. I am a spiritual being with an incidental human experience. What a change. Me, the spiritual being, will never end. That is what is called as moksha. I am the consciousness. I am the awareness principle. That is the truth. That is the reality. That is the kaivalya. It will never change with time. In the past, it was, I was awareness. Before the birth of this body, I was awareness, pure consciousness. After the death of this body, I will be awareness. What is the proof? The proof is the Upanishad, Kaivalya Upanishad, this verses. That is why it is called as Pramanam. I am no more mortal human being. I am an immortal spiritual being. Insecurity can go only by this knowledge of my spiritual nature. Tam nyatva, knowing that Brahman as what? Not as Brahman existing in, in, uh, in uh, heaven. That Brahman is here right now behind this body. 
it is in the same place the reflected consciousness and the original consciousness the reflected consciousness is the body and mind and the world the reflected consciousness is together with the original consciousness in the same there is no distance which separates them normally a mirror and my reflection there is a distance but in vedanta you should remember in reflection of the reflected consciousness there is no distance wherever the thought the thought itself has got consciousness there is no difference between consciousness and the thought that is there is no physical distance it is illumined by consciousness a thought is illumined by consciousness that is why whenever the easiest way to realize my true nature as this pure light of spiritual light is just sit down in meditation or just sit down quietly and whenever a mind a thought rises in the mind just tell yourself i am the light in which this thought is being aware is that light there or not it is there because it is me i am that light i can disprove everything in the world but i cannot negate myself i can negate everything oh this is not there that is not there but ultimately can i negate myself no self is something which can never be negated even in sleep the self is there but the body and mind and the world is not there self is there that is what is my real nature tam nyatva knowing that spiritual nature of mine i become fearless what a beautiful verse is this next week we will do this another very beautiful verse it comes in bhagavad gita also it comes in many many upanishad this is the favorite uh shankaracharya is one of the favorite uh, uh, verses sarvabhutastam atmanam sarvabhutani chaatmani sampashyan brahma paramam yati nane na hetuna experiencing one's own self in all beings and all beings in the self one attains the highest and not by any other means see the upanishad is so beautiful it clearly says there is no other means come on there is nothing else this is the way to come to reality we will see this verse next week verse number 10 these are all meditational verses each of these verses you can by heart them you in right in the beginning whenever you come to the class i've already uh, circulated the uh, chanting of swami parmatmananda also at the beginning to the to, uh, to the participants you can just learn the chanting by listening to that uh, chant okay so with that we'll close today and uh, we'll continue the 10th verse next week okay Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purnahat Purnamudachade Purnasya Purnamathaya Purnameva Vasishade Om Shanti 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 Hi Hari Om Sri Guru Bhyo Namaha Hari Om Okay. Um, Shanmugam is uh, unmuting everybody, so you can. Uh, if you have a question, you can ask uh, by raising your hand or uh, putting it in the chat box. Uh, to answer, I mean, why we are sent here? Uh, Secretary, I have two questions, Secretary. Yeah, yeah. Tell me. Secondly, this uh, is there any difference between fate and destiny? Fate and destiny. Okay, that's your question. Fate means what? See, fate is something which you should say that you know what I'm experiencing today 
in my life is my fate that's all don't don't put too much attachment to that you know fate means whatever i'm experiencing if you want to know why did i experience all this you just take it as a law of universe that's all and what is destiny destiny is what i can make you see today i can change my destiny in the sense that i don't want to remain as a individual anymore i want to learn about who i am so i have a chance to change my destiny see the 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 the, the cosmic law may have some destiny for me but i have a will power that is given to me by the lord i by knowing this knowledge by having studying this kaivalya upanishad i will be able to change my destiny i will be able to change my uh travel i will not be born in another body because i have known my real nature here and now so that is what is it uh, is is meaning of fate and destiny am i clear mm. the okay. second question is uh, the second is the, the last week's one uh, the as you the bus 21 say spiritual death is it different from mortal death what is it the uh, spiritual, spiritual death oh spiritual death and mortal death no no see what what it means is see mortal death means what when you drop this body physical body you are dropping somebody also drops his body and he moves forward you see what is spiritual death so you are clear about mortal uh, death mortal death means mortal body is dying body is never immortal but what is spiritual death spiritual death is what is described in isha vasya upanishad very clearly we will study that later what it means is i have disowned my real self i have disowned my nature that is what is called as spiritual death you see i have not owned up that i am the pure consciousness awareness principle i didn't have the knowledge of this you see i never knew that there is something like this existing in this world it is the upanishad which is now trying to reveal to me and with the help of these verses when i contemplate on these verses i will be able to reach that pure awareness you will be able to reach it it see it is the verses which will make your intellect open up so that spiritual death is if you are uh, uh, agyani a person who has not come to the upanishads he all agyanis they have spiritual death but by coming to this study of upanishad you are awakening to your spiritual nature and that is what you should focus on forget about the spiritual death come to say and say i am a spiritual being okay thank you um i want to know what dies when we die okay good question what dies is the physical body the body is only a house in the house there are indriyas and indriyas means there are functions the power of seeing the power of hearing prana the prana leaves the body that is what dies the prana dies prana means if you are not we are talking about the prana which is the body was breathing in and out <laughs> what doesn't die is the sukshma shariram sukshma shariram in tatvoda says the five subtle organs the powers of the the jnana indriyas that doesn't die the so, powers the powers of action that doesn't die the mind doesn't die even so in they, sleep yeah even in sleep for example the mind doesn't die the mind remains next day morning your knowledge is still there 
I just want to know another question, sir, related to that. Uh, yeah. As you said that uh, that prana is the symbol of uh, consciousness. It, I mean, when prana goes, the consciousness also goes. I mean, where that consciousness goes? Uh, so, uh, like, if I uh, leave the prana, uh, where my consciousness will go? Okay, uh, good question. See, when you say consciousness of the body goes, mm -hmm. that means your 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 you are, re you are referring to the reflection of consciousness in the body. Mm -hmm. It is not the original consciousness. Original consciousness is your real nature that can never go. Mm -hmm. It doesn't travel. That is what is being revealed by the Upanishads. What goes is the, is the, uh, the consciousness which is reflected in your mind. That is traveling. You see, there is, there, are, there is a mind, you know, the mind is a sukshma sharira. It is a subtle body. That subtle body has got a reflection of consciousness. What, what leaves the body is the reflection of that consciousness in the mind, together with the mind, the vritti, jnanam, it leaves the body. Okay, so... Yeah. The, the, the original consciousness is the awareness. Awareness means what? Right now you can say, I am the pure awareness. I am never born. I am never will die. This aware and wh why are you able to say it with such a confidence? Because the Upanishad is saying that. Upanishad is telling me I am the consciousness and consciousness does not have birth. It doesn't have death. I hold on to that truth and I say that that truth I believe in. My mind is telling me, my senses are telling me the body is dying, the, you know, the person is dead and all that. That is my senses. My senses are reporting that. But what the senses say is not the truth. It is only false. False means what? I am not that. That's all. I am not body, I am not traveling. The truth is, I am the pure consciousness. Consciousness. Yes. One more question. Uh, you also said, sir, that uh, uh, the God becomes time. Yes. It becomes God. time. That's and right. I just, uh, I have another question related to that, uh, like uh, uh, as whatever I have read previously. I heard that God has no birth, it has uh, no end, and it has no age at all. So why we find the time always changing? I mean, if that is God and it is absolutely the God and it, uh, the God has no age. So why are we always finding that there is past, future and present? Why the time change and with the passage of time, where it goes? What does it become? Okay, good. Very good question. These are very deep questions. I'm glad you're asking them. See, whenever we say time, time is a principle which is experienced by the mind. Okay. Okay. And the mind is something which is coming and going. Whenever the mind comes, the time is there. In waking state, there is a time. In sleep state, there is no mind. There is no time. In dream state, there is another mind, status of mind, which is a dream time. The dream time is different than the waking time because the dream time is only 60 seconds according to some uh, waking time. So uh, it is a play of mind, you would say. I mean, this is an mind. illusion. That's correct. It this is, is an illusion. illusion. It is an illusion. And that is what is called as Maya. It is called as Maya Shakti. It is a Shakti of that pure Brahman. See, so you wouldn't believe that I'm yeah, 26. Can, yes. I'm, I'm 27 years old and yes. this question has never, uh, you know, let me sleep properly. That, uh, you know, uh, I'm 27 years old. It's been the uh, last 12 years I'm finding the answer for the question because uh, I'm brought up in a very religious family here in North India. Basically, oh. we are brought up in the atmosphere of Sikhism. So we, have, we are Hindus, but we still have no deeper knowledge of the Vedas and the Upanishads. No problem. It's okay. Uh, See, each and, one of... Yes, go ahead. I just, I just want to know that, uh, you know, uh, 
we it is real it was really in, uh, so difficult for me to find the actual aim of the life for say okay. uh, we have uh, professional aims we have social aims so that aims got fulfilled and yeah. we need to think for another aim also that's so right if that is the absolute aim why we become aimless after the fulfillment of that particular aim so i came to know that there is a, a, an aim which may be permanent for the life that's correct and i am looking for that aim okay that is why you are come to that is what is called as moksha if, shastra moksha if that is the achievement of god yes i just want to know that why we are sent here if yes. you know if yeah. we are here to achieve him we have correct. come from himself we are that's part right. of himself why he that's sent right. ourselves there you see the i would suggest you go through i have sent you the talks of tatva bodha you know there uh, yes. i have sent you by email uh, the all the links for mm -hmm. all the talks uh, the, uh, okay. in that there is a text called as tatva bodha so i would recommend you just there are five talks of tatva bodha you listen to that five talks you will understand what uh, what what the, your answer to that question is there in those talks okay but to answer your question in brief here that is what i i said right in the beginning in the beginning uh, i said that all of us are born in this world and we are born with a mind you see we are born in with a body and we are born with a mind the mind has got certain inclinations you see it has got some tendency one it becomes a doctor one becomes a lawyer one becomes a farmer one becomes a now that is what we are we think that is what we think we are we go through our life but a point comes where we go through dharma artha artha means earning money uh kama means having entertainments dharma artha kama these three things are goals of life following right and wrong uh, uh, having entertainment in the world earning money enjoyment and uh, dharma artha kama okay these three things but there is something else which is called as moksha that is the fourth goal so a person who has seen life of dharma artha kama then he feels that i have no i have attained whatever this dharma artha kama can give i know this is what it is but it has got limitation how do i get rid of this limitations of life and that is the that is what is called as moksha purusha i want to know what is the real goal the real goal is all of us are born in this world to have the knowledge of our real nature according to our scriptures the question you are asking is why what is the purpose of life yes sir the purpose of life according to the scriptures is you have been born to know your real nature as atma so study the upanishads slowly try to understand what is this nature the upanishad is talking about and grow in life you see every every time when you read the upanishad you read the scriptural text you learn and understand you will find that you are growing in life that is what is called as spiritual growth okay, okay? thank you thank you yeah saro Uh, you are muted. I think I can't hear you. Can't hear you. Yeah. Can you hear me now? Now it's okay. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So one you mentioned that uh, thought is illumined by consciousness. Yeah. Yeah. So, but my question is, uh, we have positive thoughts and negative thoughts. Yes. Okay, so both are equally illumined by consciousness. Correct. Yeah. So I have to use my discrimination to choose which thought to pursue. Yes. Yeah. So, but my question is, why is the negative also illumined? 
because that is your punya papam you see thoughts are expressions of your past punyam and past papam okay okay they are expressing themselves and that is the that is the journey of the whole life so when i'm saying about the past it could mean my immediate preceding moment also yes yes it can be immediate preceding or 5 years ago or 10 years ago or the previous birth or 100 births before also. okay okay that is causing my thoughts and that is getting yes. illumined by my consciousness that's correct okay okay now the second question is uh, so there is also this collective consciousness in in psychology yes. they talk about the collective consciousness mm-hmm. does that hold good in this uh, when we studying the upanishads or is that yeah, just yeah yeah uh, there is see, the connective the collective consciousness is nothing but ishvara total consciousness of the, the world total consciousness of all the human beings in put together is this ishvara that's all total consciousness of the people put together yes. now okay now the thing is the total consciousness of the world of all the people in the jagat is again filled with lots of positives and negatives yes yeah as per the people only the jagat is there yes you yes. see the world is nothing but only these positive negative thoughts which are expressing and this to express these thoughts only the world is created that's all okay okay now now the question is okay so when we when i say that i am the one with the consciousness okay uh but i'm saying uh, and the but there's so many bodies ah good there's See, so many bodies yeah, yeah. are there so, so many consciousness that's your question yes yes so what about the ekam principle yes yes you see what they say is like you have sun one mm-hmm. sun is there but there are 10 buckets of water and mm. buckets of water are the bodies with the mind body with the mind body with the mind the mind inside each of them is reflecting that consciousness consciousness is one but the reflections are many oh. it means uh, when we uh, get into a body then we get separated i mean when we, when we it, get it, into yes, the body and mind we get separated from that consciousness yeah. you are right when yes. we get the body yes. we are separated from our original consciousness i mean uh, as it is always said that uh, the dualism principle of mind correct. and body works duality. only when we are in body that's correct duality works only when you are in the body don't when we to... die it... yeah go ahead yeah when you die what happens is that mind has left this body therefore we don't we disregard this body we reject the body okay okay Okay. okay so it's okay. A, the duality is not reality reality is advaita that's what you should remember so okay oh. fine this is the reflected consciousness ah, it is all reflections you see you don't have to go up to the death stage and all that you only take your experience on a daily basis i was awake i was asleep i got up now during the sleep state who are, who who are, who, are, who am i i am the pure consciousness yes i don't have to wait for the death of the body and then birth of the next body and so on you know i look at my own experience today and say in my sleep state in the prashna upanishad the question will be asked by a disciple who am i in my sleep state the guru will say you are atma in your sleep state so don't have to wait till death of the body and i you know study of 12 upanishads to know who i am i yeah i, I am yeah. the pure atma everybody knows it everybody is that but only thing is we don't know how to discriminate between that uh, jiva bhava and parmatma bhava we have to understand what is the jiva bhava jiva ga bhava is coming in my waking state mm-hmm. but my natural state is what i am the atma swarupa so let my mind think about these two things very well, uh, more number of times okay jiva bhava is in the waking state brahma bhava is in the sleep state is jiva bhava my real state or is brahma bhava my real state 
The Upanishad says the Brahma Bhava in the sleep state is your real nature. The Jiva Bhava in your waking state is an incidental nature. It will come and go, come and go for a few years. That's why Vishnu is depicted. The, that's why Vishnu is depicted the, as lying on the serpent with the, on the sea. Yes. Yeah, that's the reason for that yes, symbolism. That's right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And one last question is: I am realizing that there's a lot of dualism in my approach, where I am not being able to. I am seeing the consciousness as an object. I've been struggling to make yeah, it a yeah, subject yeah. not happening. It's, it's yeah. Uh, Don't make it as an object. Don't make consciousness as an object. Only say, I am the consciousness. Learn to say, I am the consciousness. I am just the practice. Just keep practicing this. Keep practicing. Keep telling your mind, I am the consciousness. I am the awareness. As revealed by the uh, Upanishad. It, always say that sentence. You need to have a proof that I am this. My sense organs are telling me I am the body. Mm. My, my eyes are telling me this body is my true self. Mm. But Upanishads are telling me this body is not you. Mm. So what is the pramanam I should use? Should I use my eyes or should I use the Upanishad? The Upanishads are more stronger because it is coming from God. The, 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 the creator himself has given me the Upanishadic words. The words of the Upanishads are from the, from the creator of the whole universe. Why should I depend on my simple sense organs and my mind? My mind is, I, can I depend on my mind? I cannot because it's very limited. What is limited. My mind cannot even know what is beyond uh, certain things in front of my house. It doesn't know. There is limitation for our sense organs. There is limitation for our knowledge. Mm -hmm. So mind is limited to only Maya. That's correct. It is again only Maya. It's just that you know, mind, mind from Maya, Maya, Maya and mind. Yeah, M Maya is nothing but the mind. You see, mind is yeah. Uh, keep on telling me so many things about what I should do, what I should not do. It should, it it gives me ideas about what my family is, what my father is, what my mother is, what my husband is. What you know, it's all the mind, right? It is all thoughts in the mind. And it is giving me a reality of its own. The mind, when it's churning thoughts in, in inside, it is making everything real for me. Yeah. But what is the truth? The consciousness, which is, is the light in which the thoughts are coming. That is the truth. That is not changing. The thoughts are changing. You know, yesterday I thought my husband was very bad. You know, tomorrow, today I think my husband is the best husband in the world. <laughs> I, you know, it's th the thought which has changed. But yes. the illuminator of the thought has not changed. When I was five years old, also, I had thoughts. When I was 10 years old, also, I had thoughts. Yesterday, I had thoughts. Thoughts are changing or not, they are changing. But has the yes. illuminator of the thoughts, who illumined those thoughts? Is it the sunlight which is illumining it? No. Are the thoughts illumining themselves? No. Because thoughts are jadam. They are inert. So Upanishad has got a way to tell me who I am. So and what is the reality? Us, yes. You see, every time the problem is our vasana, our tendency to believe what we have thought who we are is very strong. We need to slowly remove that and say, I am the pure consciousness. I am ever free. I am the pure consciousness. I am ever free. It is taught to me by the scripture. That's all. Okay. And, so, Saru, and, have I answered your questions? And, and that practice will get me to experience that also. Yes. The practice will help you to say one day, I am that consciousness 
the Upanishad has done its job. I don't need any more talks. I will keep this knowledge as my knowledge in my heart. I will live and I can abide in that. I can abide in that thought. I am always pure. Every time I've been thinking I am the impure thoughts, impure thoughts, you know, that my thoughts were, uh, uh, my thoughts was agitation, my thoughts was uh, ignorance, my thought was greed, my thought was so many things, you know, desires, so many, I, all these are only thoughts. Till you are able to say, I am the pure Atma, keep on studying the scriptures. Use different means. See, you have, you've got chanting, you've got pilgrimage, you've got, you can use it, but keep the study going. Yes, yes, yes. Because it Thank is you. these mantras which will reveal to you ultimately and it will make your intellect say. With reason, the uh, mantras will prove to you. Your intellect can only understand reasoning. Yeah. After some time, it will require reason. And Upanishads have got enough reasoning to say that I will teach you, don't worry. I will teach the intellect. The Swarupam, I need to keep going back to the yes. Swarupam, the Swarupam. Yeah, my Swarupam, Swarupam. You see, there's a lot of knowledge coming up in the Upanishads. You just wait for it, it'll come. Right, right. Thank okay, you. Anybody so else? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so, so much. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else has a question? Okay, if there are no more questions, uh, we will continue with the 10th mantra next week. Thank you. And, yeah, thank you. 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 Good night. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. 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 Thank you.